Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission Atlantic Herring Management Board. <clears throat> I'm Cherie Patterson, the chairperson, and I would like to call the meeting to order. With the board's consent, um, I would like to um, approve the agenda. Is Thank there, oh, excuse me? One hand from Megan Ware. Okay. Go ahead, Megan. Thanks, Madam Chair. I just wanted to um, flag one item under other business. Thank you, Megan. Okay, with that uh, change to the agenda, is there any opposition to approving the agenda? I have no hands. Thank you. I would like to move next to approving the proceedings from the August 2020 meeting. Is there any opposition to moving for the approval of these proceedings? I see no hands and objection. Thank you. Is there any public comment that uh, does not pertain to this meeting? If you could raise your hand. I have no hands up. Thank you. So next on the agenda, uh, we will be looking to set the quota period for the 2022 Area 1A fishery, and we'll start with Emily Franca to provide us with a presentation and a catch up. Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, if you could, could go to the next slide, please, Maya. Great. Um, so I'll start out the presentation today with a brief review of the 2021, 2021 through 2023 specifications that were approved by the board earlier this year. Um, I'll then review the quota period systems established by Amendment 3. Um, and as Madam Chair just mentioned, the board action for consideration today is to consider setting the quota periods for the 2022 Area 1A fishery. And then also at the request of the board chair, I'll provide a brief summary of the postponed draft addendum three. Um, and this was brought up in discussion last month during the last days out call um, regarding quota periods. And just as a reminder, final action on this draft addendum was postponed last year. So I'll just provide a, a brief overview to refresh the board's memory on this postponed addendum. Next slide, please. So I'll start out with the specifications and the quota periods. Next slide. So in February of this year, the board adopted the 2021 through 2023 Atlantic Herring specifications as outlined in the New England Council's Framework 8. And the board approved these specifications in February contingent on a final rule being published by NOAA Fisheries. So in March, on March 29th, NOAA Fisheries did publish an interim final rule to implement Framework 8, including those specifications. And there was one change from the Council's recommended specifications regarding the 2021 research set aside. So the original recommendation was a 3% research set aside for 2021 and a 0% research set aside for 2022 and 2023. However, it was determined that the research set aside participants would not continue their project for 2021. So the uh, NOAA interim final rule set that 2021 research set aside at 0%. So shortly thereafter, via an email vote, the board approved that change for the 2021 research set aside uh, to 0% for 2021 to align with the NOAA Fisheries Interim Final Rule. Next slide, please. 
Uh, so here we have the specifications for fishing years 2021 through 2023. Um, you can see that in 2021 this year, the Area 1A sub ACL was set at 1,391 metric tons. And for 2022 and 2023, uh, the Area 1A sub ACL is set at 1,184 metric tons for each of those two years. And as a reminder, if the catch from the New Brunswick weir fishery in Canada is less than the specified trigger amount, then 1,000 metric tons of the management uncertainty buffer would be added to the area 1A sub ACL. Next slide, please. So moving into the quota period systems, Per Amendment 3, quota periods shall be determined annually for Area 1A, and specifically, the Board can consider distributing the Area 1A sub-ACL using a bi-monthly, a trimester, or a seasonal quota period to meet the needs of the fishery. And the Board can also decide whether quota from January through May would be allocated to later on in the fishing season. And then finally, any underages may be rolled from one period to the next within the same year. Next slide, please. So here on the screen are the three quota period options that are outlined in Amendment 3. And it's important to note that these allocation percentages are fixed and they can only be changed through an addendum. So up top on the screen is the bi-monthly quota period um, and those have a couple different options. Um, in 2019, the board allocated the area 1A sub ACL using that middle bi monthly option with no landings prior to June 1st and with June as a one month quota period. The next option down in the left hand corner is the trimester quota period option, and those trimesters are set as January through May, June through September, and October through December. And finally, there is the seasonal quota option on the right bottom side of the screen. Um, for the last two years, 2020 and 2021 fishing years, the board has allocated the Area 1A sub ACL using this seasonal quota period with no landings prior to June 1st. So with 72.8% allocated for June through September, and 27.2% allocated for October through December. Next slide, please. So as a reminder, the board's action for consideration today is to consider setting the quota periods for the 2022 Area 1A fishery from those three types of options that I just outlined, the bi-monthly, trimester, or seasonal quota period options. Um, and again, the sub ACL for 2022 for area 1A is set at 1,184 metric tons. Next slide, please. And so as I mentioned earlier, just to wrap up my presentation here, I'll provide a brief summary of the postponed draft addendum three. Um, and again, this postponed draft addendum was brought up in discussion um, last month during the days out call. Um, so the board chair asked that I provide a brief summary to refresh the board's memory since it was last discussed last year in May 2020. And this is intended to be a, a brief summary of the draft addendum um, as a reminder of the types of options that were developed through that process. Next slide, please. So in October 2019, the board initiated draft addendum three to consider new approaches for managing the area 1A fishery under low quota scenarios specifically. And the board specified that the draft addendum should include an option which allocates 100% of the area 1A quota to the months of June through December. The board also specified that the draft addendum should consider expanding days out provisions across different permit categories. Um, and this action was in response to the challenges in managing uh, these reduced sub ACL quota levels based on the 2018 benchmark stock assessment. Next slide, please. So here's a, a timeline for the postponed draft addendum three. Um, again, the board initiated the draft addendum in October 2019. The plan development team then developed the draft addendum three. 
in February 2020, the board approved draft addendum three for public comment and a public comment period took place uh, between February and March of 2020. And then in May 2020, the board postponed final action on draft addendum three until a final rule for the council's amendment eight was published, which uh, was published later in January of this year. And until the council and commission could meet to discuss coordination of hearing management. Next slide, please. So as far as the options that were included in the draft addendum three for public comment, um, starting with the quota management section, the status quo option would be no changes to the current quota period option. So maintaining those three quota period systems of the bi-monthly, the trimester, and the seasonal quota periods. Option two uh, would add an alternative seasonal allocation option, which if the board uh, decided to allocate 0% of the quota prior to June 1st, the board could then choose to allocate 100% of the Area 1A sub-ACL from June through December. And then option three, uh, put forward an alternate time frame for trimester management where, manage, where harvest, excuse me, harvest could be concentrated during the peak availability of the resource. So 80% allocated uh, from June through August. And then both of these options were developed uh, to be added to the existing suite of quota period options uh, in the status quo option. Next slide, please. Um, so moving on to the options that were developed in this postponed addendum for uh, days out permit provisions, the status quo option here uh, would be that only category A permits are subject to landing day restrictions and weekly landing limits from June through September. And then option two that was developed uh, was that all category C permits would also be subject to the same days out measures as those that would apply to category A. And these options were intended to address uh, category C permits that were not accounted for through the small mesh bottom trawl program. And this option was developed to implement uh, the same days out measures for 99.9% .9 of the vessels that were responsible for herring landings in recent years uh, when this draft addendum was developed. Next slide, please. Uh, and then finally, to wrap up here, draft addendum three uh, also included options for weekly landing limits. Um, so the status quo option was weekly landing limits that would apply only to category A permits from June through September. Option two that was developed would be similar to that status quo, but it would remove the notification for category A permits 45 days prior to the start of the season. And then finally, option three that was developed, um, all vessel permit categories could be subject to weekly landing limits, and those limits could be specified throughout the entirety of the season. Next slide, please. So that wraps up my presentation. Um, again, just covering the specification and quota periods, followed by that brief summary of postponed draft addendum three. And again, the board action for consideration today is to consider setting the quota periods for the 2022 Area 1A fishery. Next slide, please. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Does anybody in the board have questions for Emily? Megan Ware. Go ahead, Megan. Thank you. Um, this is a question for staff. I'm just curious if there's any guidelines or rules at the commission about how long um, kind of that, that differential time between a public hearing and a final action is. Um, so if there were continued conversations on addendum three, would that have to go back out for public comment or um, is there any guidance or rules about that for the commission? Sure, I'm going to let Bob take this one if that's okay. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Tony. What a favor. No, just kidding. Um, Megan, we don't really have clear guidance on exactly how long we can wait between public hearings and final decision by the board. It's really up to the board. Um, I know it's just a little bit of a cop out answer, but it, it, if the board feels that situations have changed or there's new information or you know the the public comment 
that you have received a stale for any reason, then we should go back out for another round of public comment. So it's not it's not exactly defined as a six month, ten month, you know, two years, whatever it might be, but it, it's really up to the board. If you think you would get different perspectives by going out to public comment again, then you probably should go out the you should go back out to public comment to see see what the public thinks at this time. But you know, if you feel the opposite, which you know conditions haven't changed and you're likely to get the same comment that you got last time, then uh, the board would not have to go back out for public comment. Do you have a follow up, Megan? Are you all set? No, that, that was helpful. I guess uh, I have another question, but I can get in the back of the line if there are other people with their hands up. I'll go ahead and, and uh, ask your second question. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, I know in the motion to postpone addendum three, part of it was conditioned on amendment eight and part of it was conditioned on kind of these council commission conversations. And I was just curious, have those ended? Um, so have we satisfied both conditions of the postponement or are those conversations still ongoing? Uh, again, I'm, I'm gonna go to Bob. I, I can say that the amendment eight condition was um, met. I guess I would say, but I'll let Bob speak to the other. Great, thanks, Owen. Yeah, Megan, obviously Amendment 8 is set, except there is a lawsuit in the background, I guess. Um, but as far as the conversations between the, the council and commission go about some of the jurisdictional questions that have come up, um, council and commission leadership have met a few times um, via conference call, and we also met with NOAA attorneys talking about the you know legal um, requirements and uh, opportunities within the Atlantic Coastal Act and the Magnuson Stevens Act, and that that last conversation with the attorneys was, I think it was close to a year ago now. So it's been quite a while, um, and we haven't, and we've kind of lost momentum on that. I think a number of other events kind of overtook the the group, and we lost momentum. So we, one of the ideas that was out there is to pull together a, a white paper or some sort of straw man document that would sort of define the roles ASMC would play and the roles the council would play and, and sort of divvy up the responsibilities that are associated with herring management. And that, that project has not really been started. We've talked about it a couple of times. We haven't, um, the group hasn't followed through on that. So there's not a lot of activity right now. Um, ASMC in our, in our draft action plan has a very generic line uh, under herring that says continue to improve uh, coordination and collaboration with New England Council. And I, if I remember right, I think New England Council has a similar sort of generic um, placeholder um, task in their um, draft priorities for next year that kind of talks about the coordination between the council and ASMSC. So, you know, we both are sort of still contemplating it, but it doesn't have a lot of momentum right now, I guess is the best way to respond. A follow-up, Megan? I'm all set, thank you. Okay. All right then. Um, I was made aware that there is a motion that is proposed for the board's consideration. Would the maker of the motion please um, move forward with the motion? Shree, that is Megan. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so this is a motion for setting the 2022 um, the seasonal split of quota. So move to allocate the 2022 Area 1A sub-ACL seasonally with 72.8% available from June through September and 27.2% allocated from October through December. The fishery will close when 92% of the seasonal period's quota has been projected to be harvested and underages from June through September shall be rolled into the October through December period. Thank you, Megan. Is there a second to the motion? Uh, Richie White has his hand up. Yes, I'll second. Thank you, Richie. Uh, discussion among the board. Please raise your hand if you'd like to discuss. I have Melanie. Go ahead, Melanie. 
Thanks, Chair. Um, I don't really have anything to discuss other than just to say that I, I support this status quo motion. Thank you. Any other board member? No other board members, but um, a member of the public slash RAP chair. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I'll go out for co comment from the public now. Uh, so we have Jeff Kalin. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, and uh, I just wanted to say that I appreciate uh, Megan and, and Richie's motion. I, I really think this was sort of the outcome of where the federal uh, commission discussion, um, uh, you know, ended up uh, because it provides, you know, access to federal, uh, federally permitted trawl boats in the in the fall. And, and uh, you know, I, we're all in a very difficult position uh, relative to the quota. There's no question about it. And I think this is a very fair motion and I, I just appreciate it. I, I didn't know what to expect today, frankly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kalen. Is there any other public that would like to make comment? I see no other hands, Sheree. Okay. Thank you. So the motion on the board is to allocate the 2022 Area 1A sub ACL seasonally with 72.8% available from June through September and 27.2% allocated from October through December. The fishery will close when 92% of the seasonal periods quota has been projected to be harvested and underages from June through September shall be rolled into the October through December period. Motion by Ms. Weir and seconded by uh, Mr. White. So is there any opposition from the board on this motion? I see no hands raised in opposition. Okay, motion um, is approved by consensus. Thank you very much. Um, we'll move on to other business. Megan, you had some other business to bring forward. I did. Um, I also just had a comment on the addendum three process, because I think at, at some point we're going to have to deal with that, uh, if that's okay. Go ahead. So I think since it was postponed to a, kind of like on specific conditions and not indefinitely, I do think at some point, this is going to come back up to the board and we're going to have to figure out how to deal with this. Um, my sense is that changing the percentages in the quota periods is a, a very controversial topic and um, with some people in favor and some very much opposed. And so that can create challenges. I will just say, I think something that is at least worth a conversation in that addendum is the trip limits. Uh, particularly in, in the fall period. Um, and I'm thinking specifically to kind of what we're facing now where we have very low metric tons and we've set zero landing days, even though we still have fish in the, in the bank, so to speak, because we just don't think the fishery can um, be opened and stay within that amount. And, and it may be that we're at such low levels that a weekly landing limit wouldn't help in that situation, but it may be that if we have small increases in quota, the weekly landing limit would give us a bit more ability to forecast the landing. So um, I'm just throwing that out there as I think something that's at least worth a conversation at some point. Uh, thank you, Megan. I think as, as Bob had mentioned that one of the two criteria for moving this forward has been met. So in order for the second part to be met, NOAA fish, not NOAA, um, the council and ASMFC would, leadership would need to um, continue forward with that white paper. So are you recommending that they have a time limit to do that? Nope, um, I think uh, rightly so other things have come up, including COVID that is, <laughs> Uh, change people's priorities. And so I, I don't think there needs to be a time limit. I just kind of wanted to provide some thoughts on, on how we move forward with that addendum, because I, I think it could be a tricky one. 
Okay. Thank you. Did you have other business other than that? I did. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to flag. Um, so right now, Maine DMR through ACS, ACCSP has funding for heron sampling. And uh, depending on this week, either that will have one more year or this will be the final, final year. Um, I'm not trying to focus on that decision, but I just wanted to flag for the board that in the near future that that funding is going to end. Um, and the sampling main DMR supports is in multiple states. So I think a challenge we're going to have is once that funding goes away, I don't think main DMR is going to have the state funds to support sampling in other states. So I just want to flag this um, as maybe something we can talk about with the state agencies over the next year or so. Uh, my understanding is that sampling is really important for the stock assessment. So I think it would be good to start thinking about some of those issues at a time. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for bringing that forward to us. Um, is there any other discussion or business to be brought up before the board? Madam Chair, I don't see any have any other hands up, but I do have a question for for NOAA Fisheries. If you will, sure, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted, you know, I think uh, Emily touched on this before during our presentation that right now, and I think Megan did as well, that we have zero landing days right now for this um, period to fishery, even though we do have uh, fish in the bank. Um, but that fish in the bank is so low that uh, we didn't feel like we could open the fishery without having to close it within the same day and have the potential for going over. Um, but I wanted to see if we had any updates from NOAA on the potential for transfer from the Canadian weir fishery. And I see Allie Murphy with her hand up. Go ahead, Allie. Thanks, Madam Chair. So, um, um, we're still in the process of finalizing um, the information, but we do anticipate having an in season adjustment publish um, fairly soon based on the information we have now. So, I'll keep your eyes um, open for that. Thank you, Allie. Is that um, the full amount or is that partial amount? Allie has her hand up again. Go ahead, Allie. Um, I'm just looking at the regulations right now, and um, they read, if NIMS determines that the New Brunswick Weir fishery lands less than about 3,000 metric tons of herring, um, NIMS will subtract 1,000 metric tons from the management uncertainty and reallocate that to the Area 1A sub-ACL. So my read is that it's an all or nothing thing. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. So, based on that, I would say that um, we would perhaps be on the lookout to put together a days out meeting um, relatively soon. So, just um, keep that on your radar. Yes, thank you. And then, Allie, do you still have your hand up? Is that an artifact from before? My apologies, that's an artifact. Okay. And then I'm not sure uh, Jeff Kalen had his hand up here. Should we? Go ahead, Jeff. Yes, I thank Madam Chair. So, so how much, how much is left of the uh, 11, you know, I forget what, 1184 is next year. How, how much is left of the 1A quarter? How many tons? Uh, Renee, do you have that information or, or Allie? This is Renee. Um, so Jeff, I'm looking at the quota monitoring site that was updated yep. from NOAA as of the 14th and yeah, about 1300 metric tons approximately out of the 1579 for the whole period okay. um, for this current period. 
or the, the previous what we have minus the thousand was about 180 metric tons remaining before the 92% would close it down. Okay, thank you. Um, I could have looked at that myself, but I appreciate that just in terms of thinking this through. And it's 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 a disaster for everybody. And I don't know, uh, you know, I don't think addendum three has a lottery in it, but you know, where we don't have ITQs, um, maybe there's some kind of quota lottery like's been used in scallops uh, in the past that that could allow a boat or two of some kind, you know, uh, go uh, to take these fish. Um, so, I don't know, thanks for letting me say that. And it is a tough situation for everybody, but uh, it's good to have an open forum like this to discuss it. Thanks again. Thank you. Is there any other business before the board? I see no additional hands. All right, could I get a motion to adjourn in a second? So moved, Steve Trent. And a second for Connor McCannis. I'm sorry, you got a second? I, I missed that. Yeah, for Connor McManus. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Steve and Connor. So with that, uh, the meeting is adjourned and thank you very much.